sorry about the static. Okay, I forgot to turn on noise suppression. Okay, so I'm going to install ITP. Uh, this is for Arch mostly. You can also find the instructions uh, here. I'll just hold it here. One second. Just hold it here for you, uh, so you can see. But if you're on Arch, you can just type yay and then you pause it. I'm just going to pause because you can. If you type in your password and it's picked up a microphone, you can actually tell when someone's typing by the sounds. So, yeah. Okay, password's done. Let me just say why. ITP. Um, I'm just switching to ITPD because it's much more safer. Uh, I feel like I'm, I've, I checked on it from. It's a website called Snike. I think it's Snike, yeah. You can scan repositories and, like, ITP, the normal one, came off a lot more hits, and the ITPD, it doesn't really have any security flaws that I've heard of so far. And they seem more competent in general. There's also like conversations like with drama going in the community, which I'd rather not discuss. I'm not into drama. Um, I have to uninstall. If you want to uninstall, also, you might want to uninstall ITP. So if you want to or I uninstall ITP, you just say R. I don't know if it's RNS, I'll, I'll just say R for my sake. ITP. ITP. Why? Because ITP and ITPD are built different, different languages, coding languages. So to start it, you basically just enter ITPD in terminal and the client will start, it's supposed to. Yeah, see. Uh, just work. From yet. I just uninstall and reinstall it in case something important leaks here. Uh, but yeah. So, in file. Okay, um, now I'm going to test it. Also, this is supposedly how you run it, like if you've installed it via binary this way. So, uh, for many people that don't know, like, um, there's like programs you can run in back backgrounds like daemons. If you want to, st if you've got system D, I think, yeah, system D and you want it to automatically start. Um, so you, this is just to turn it on the ITP, right, in the background. That's just to, that's just to um, turn it on. But if you want to like enable it so it's on boot, you just say enable. So every time your PC turns, you don't have to turn it on manually, just turn it enable. And now it will turn on the, the, on your PC permanently every time you boot up. Okay, so I looked around a bit. This is the local tunnels page where you can like your router console. I don't want to show anything in case I'm the sensitive stuff there. But I'll go in and show some of the other pages maybe. Okay, like I can probably I can probably show this. So you get um, the logging levels. You can also like go to tunnels, like it shows all the tunnels and connections. And you can go to main page too. And on the main page it shows success rate. Like this is really bad and really low. I know, yeah, I know. I'll probably configure something like you can enable some of this stuff or like change around um, like UPnP for like firewall. I don't know, it's probably just firewall. But yeah, if you got a hundred percent, it's really good. And some, if you want, you can probably enable flood fill. Oh, that's the whole thing on itself. I'll check now. Okay, so yeah, if you want to configure, um, I'd call it ICP. For example, on like your system of choice, uh, if it basically you just say sudo nano, and then there's like itp conf fig. Let me just check if it's correct. Everyone. That's correct. You just need like the directory, but when you're in the directory, you can edit some stuff like um you know, like if you want to use SAM or not, you can also change ports which it runs on. Which could be useful if like if you want to like obscure or like hide that you're using this on your PC. You maybe put it on an inferior port, like a a really, really high port number, or you can put it a common port on like on uh, port 21, for example, or 22. Or any port is available, you get different connection options. If you want you can configure them with stuff. Oh yeah, like UMP and P. If stuff is firewalled, you usually enable UPnP.